was hopping around Tokyo City like a big playground When suddenly Batman burst from the shade And hit Godzilla with a bad grenade Godzilla got pissed and began to attack But didn't expect to be blocked by Shaq Who proceeded to open up a can of Shaq Fu When Aaron Carter came out of the blue And he started beating up Shaquille O'Neal Then they both got flattened by the Batmobile But before we could make it back to the Batcave Abraham Lincoln popped out of his grave And took an AK-47 out from under his hat Blew Batman away with a rat at that But he ran out of bullets and he ran away Because Dalton is crying came to save the day This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny Good guys, bad guys, and explosions As far as the eye can see And only one will survive I wonder who it will be This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny Forgot to edit on that a little bit. Let's do that. Let's see here. Oh, it's down. All right. So, uh, welcome to Gaming Fix. I'm Frank, and Heather should be along shortly. So, uh, woo! So, I've got a question for everybody. How are you adding to your gaming community? Let me know in the comments, or let me know in, uh, what you're doing. I'm going to say, personally, I am, uh, of course, doing Extra Life this weekend. The, I think it's Saturday? I don't know how we're going to do this exactly, but I can, yeah. Saturday is November 4th, my mom's birthday, and also when I'm going to do Extra Life. And uh, that's one way that I do, to do that. Another way is by making the, uh, by making the community more welcoming to everybody involved, which can be interesting thing, but, uh, you know, it's a very simple thing to do. Just, you know, don't be negative towards people, and uh, if they're a gamer and they're happy about something, try and share in that happiness. Even if it's not necessarily your jam, you can go and... Uh, taste it and with them or enjoy at least their passion uh, you don't have to rain on their parade that's not a necessity turns out so I think those are some things that you can definitely do to help out the community but how do you help out the community what do you like to do let us know in the comments or in the chat room whichever uh, you want to do we're running a little bit late today because of uh, just some slow start stuff Halloween kind of getting into things and stuff like that but uh, I guess I will start with how I got my game on I've been uh, doing something. I did something really weird. Hold on. Thank you. All right. I uh, did something really weird. Uh, I've been playing something really weird called Boat Launch, which you basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. You take different types of boats, and you launch it off of a water ramp into uh, various targets. It's uh, I I don't know why it's it's kind of a fun game. 
I like it. Um, it's it's got a lot of commercial support, but uh, it's just a real simple phone game where you just kind of push it along with your finger and then it gains momentum. There's no instructions for it, oddly enough, in the uh, in the game. So that's been interesting. I've been playing some Puzzle and Empires, like uh, some Empire and Puzzles, like I do. And uh, we were able to attack a Titan. Got uh, nine different attacks on it um, because I just kept using energy. And uh, still didn't do the job. It was, uh, it was a hard Titan to fight. Let me tell you what. got the Titan going, um, or was able to do that, uh, was in two wars, and I've got a war that started this morning, I was able to get, um, actually did really well, um, I was able to take out a team, uh, and then finish off a team that had finished me off, so that was cool, and, uh, got a decent amount of points. I don't know what the second round will hold. Probably not as much, but that's cool. Um, you know, I, I felt valuable in this war, which has been nice. I got uh, uh, let's see uh, not so we Got that done, and then we had, uh, then I played uh, Magic the Gathering Arena. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a, oh yeah, they're doing a sealed kind of thing for Extra Life, and uh, the money goes to Extra Life Seattle which uh, basically if you buy their card sleeves, the money goes to Extra Life Seattle. And it's a sealed tournament. Actually, it's not sealed. Uh, you get different decks and you get to play with them. They're pretty much like commander decks uh, or what they call ball. And uh, you, you get a free treasure every turn. And the idea is to amass as much life points as you can. And my first round I won, which was pretty cool. Pretty happy about that. It's fun. And, uh, yeah. Been having some issues with magic, which I'll talk about when uh, Mello gets here. And uh, they will be here shortly. They're taking a Uber here right now from Anaheim and, uh, to Bellflower. So they're going to be here in the studio today. And, uh, so there'll be some situation which will be interesting, which will happen live on air. Um, then I played uh, also this weekend. I played Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition and uh, with a group called Taste of the Moon run by a cool SP who went by Ben and uh, he, they ran uh, Cherry Moon which I really enjoyed playing in there was a lot of new players, and uh, they gave me the social character, so I kind of stepped back a bit because I wanted the new players to be able to learn the game and enjoy it, and uh, I just like being out. That's kind of nice. So it was a cool thing, and uh, it was a pretty good story, and I, uh, I liked it. I would recommend it's a free RPG game. It's called 
Taste of the Cherry Moon, or what is this? It's uh, Cherry Moon. Hold on, I want to actually let people know what this game is. Cherry Moon Vampire Masquerade. Yeah, a taste. Oh, a taste of the moon. Yeah, it's called the taste. Okay. So yeah, so it's called the taste of the moon as well. And it is a free RPG. And it's uh, it, it was interesting. You're playing a bunch of anarch munates, and uh, basically you're trying to find drugs. Which was a interesting thing to be part of. I did. I played. Uh, I played the vampire of uh, the uh, woman thing to tell, and uh, that kind of a, a fun role to play. I enjoyed that, and also this weekend, actually the same day. I went out to Glendale City Hall and I played some, I played with La Sangra, which is a, a very long running Camarilla game, uh, not to be confused with Camarilla Fan Club, actually it's One World by Night, and uh, I've been part of that group, let's see, when I had my store, 2000, I want to say 2006, I think that's right, so you had four years, that's 10, and then 23, so 10, 23, really, the 27, wow, maybe I'm wrong, let's see, I'm trying to figure it out, it's, uh, started in 2000 and I started playing One World by Night in 2006, so I had four years, and then that's 2010, so four, and then uh, of course a full 10 because it's 20, so 14, and then three, oh okay, so 17 years. But still, it's a, it's a long time. I'm kind of surprised that it's been that I was playing for 17 years. And I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit. Maybe the math's wrong on that. If you want to correct me, feel free down in the comments. Uh, always willing to listen. Maybe the the times are not accurate. I don't know. But I've been playing for a long time. Is the point. And uh, I have a Giovanni and an Osvaldo and a Bruja that I play. And I've been playing my Giovanni for quite a while. Um, I started out in an independent, in a uh, Giovanni game that was uh, all approved. We actually have a, that Giovanni game was pretty cool. It called, was called Promise. And uh, it was pretty fun. So now I'm playing that same character in the uh, Glendale game, which has been fun. Been getting rides from William, which I appreciate. Hats off to you, William. And uh, yeah. It's been, it's been a it's been a good time and I really appreciate it because uh, I've now gone to the game twice and I thought that I wouldn't that I might get to the game if I was lucky once and I was trying to book hotels and stuff like that so that's pretty cool to be able to just go down in a car because I wasn't expecting it and it was a nice surprise so yeah, 
fun times. They're doing their Halloween game uh, next weekend. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to attend, but it was, it, it was fun. I had a good time. And they have, uh, and then I ran, I guess I didn't run any games, but, um, and then I got my game on, uh, I've watched quite a few Halloween movies. Uh, watched Saw, the final something something. I don't know. It was the last one. Uh, what is it? Let's see. Saw. Look that up. Find it. it looks like it was saw oh yeah saw the final chapter Oh, I saw, saw the final chapter, so apparently I need to see Jigsaw, because I guess I didn't see Jigsaw. I've seen Spiral, but uh, not for Halloween. So anyway, I saw uh, saw the final chapter. It uh, it was interesting. It, you know, usually I've, most of the Saw movies have a little bit more... Um, Thought put to him. The final chapter is pretty gory, but it was uh, it was decent. I saw that. I also saw Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which is uh, it was you know an old classic movie. What can you say? And. Uh, I saw, um, I'm trying to think what else I saw for Halloween. I was watching the Disney Goosebumps, which I highly recommend. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, it's a little different than the original in that it's got a free flowing story throughout. So not only is each episode like a kind of like a, you know, a urban legend twilight zony type of thing like Goosebumps is, but it also all ties in. I think that's been pretty cool. I like the showrunner's decision to do that. So I went, I watched, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other horror movies I watched. Uh, last night I watched Halloween Ends because it seemed like the appropriate thing to watch, you know, Halloween night at, uh, or actually at 1 p.m., 1 a.m., so I figured this is the end of Halloween, so this is a good time to watch this. I watched, I'm trying to think what else I watched. I watched, uh, Put a list up and now I, it's weird I just can't remember the Halloween movies I watched I'm gonna look for them here let's see can't be that hard to find them let me see if I can find it let's see so 
12th final chapter. Oh, I saw us, which was interesting. Uh, definitely a different take on on horror, uh, kind of a different take on body snatchers, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh yes, I watched one Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. Uh that was interesting. I watched Winchester. Winchester was uh interesting. It's about the Winchester Mystery House. And I don't know if you've ever heard of, about it, but basically the idea is that the uh widow Winchester kept uh telling the like set the builders to keep building to uh, to stop the curse basically and uh, it's it's weird because it's a horror movie but it's it really is more just a movie about the Winchester you know like the Winchester ghosts and how they work so it I don't know to me it wasn't that creepy it was it, it is based on some real things that happened, so it might creep you out more that way. I don't know. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey was an interesting movie. I wanted to see the rest of the Hundred Acre Woods folks. I never got to, so it's kind of different. But... Uh, yeah, that's how I got my game on. And uh, like I said, Melo should be here arriving fairly soon. And uh, I don't know. It's weird. Um, with the radio, I would just play a song or something as an intermission. Can't really do that. So we'll uh, dive into some news. So from uh, Southeast Asia publisher Neon Doctrine and developer Game Changer Studio released a new trailer at Indie Horror Showcase for Macabre Creature Collector and Empire Management Sim My Lovely em Empress. It offers a taste of the power that the deliciously demonic you guy can bestow. Uh, in the ambitious conclusion to my my lovely trilogy of games, uh, i.e. my lovely wife, my lovely daughter, you rule the Crimson Kingdom with both head, head and heart as Emperor Hong. In his grief following the death of Empress Zhang, Hong calls upon powerful yet forbidden entities. Yao Gai, in a bid to resurrect his beloved in this unholy alliance of why is this unholy alliance a wise decision? Uh, you have your kingdom, your choices, your story, and this unique mix of resource management, mythology, and empire simulation gameplay. You'll make decisions that directly impact the story. Inspired by East and Southeast Asian mythology, including a mesmerizing inkbrush art style, soundtrack, and gameplay mechanics. Develop relationships with your you guy in true creature collecting fashion, empowering them to become powerful allies or potent sacrifices. Uh, put your diplomatic hat on. Work with other rulers to see your nations prosper or take an entirely different path as you go alongside them. Lock and load in case you missed the news. Indie Arc officially announced a November 10th release date of Strike Force Heroes, an arena shooter, first introduced as a Flash game in 2012, which has been completely rebuilt with modern mechanics. Strike Force Heroes is back completely reimagined, featuring a fully rewritten story, enhanced graphics, and co-op 
and PvP online multiplayer mode. Fans of the original game, as well as a whole new series of gamers, are sure to appreciate Strike Force Heroes humor, charm, over the top action, and epic storytelling. It was even recently named as one of the most played demos at Steam Next Fest. So that is uh, really cool. Also, uh, we have the Halloween show. It should be posted later today. I was planning on posting it uh, today, but unfortunately, time got the best of me. So uh, let's talk about T Public. Because, actually, let's see, maybe they have a deal. I always like to check uh, as I'm talking about it. But if you go on to tpublic.com slash stores slash gaming hyphen F-I-X-X, then you can pick up some swag. Maybe for Halloween. Uh, maybe just because... Today is uh, Day of the Dead, Day of the Mortes, and it is also uh, Samhain, and uh, yeah, it looks like there, we don't have a sale today, but there's always a sale, check back. And uh, you can pick up the gaming fix, bringing up the community uh, original T-shirt, the gaming fix, bringing up the community shirt, the gaming fix live shirt, um, tons of shirts, as well as lots of curated stuff. So uh, definitely good times. And. Uh, Great. Like I said, uh, lots of curated stuff. And uh, we also have a lot of Halloween, like I said, lot, hot, lots of Halloween stuff. Uh, we have a Mike Myers shirt. We have a Trick or Treat shirt. Creepy Girls are the cutest. A Halloween Skeleton. All of these different things, and uh, feel free to check out our curated stuff. Actually, I may even. No, I'm not going to do it on air, but I uh, check back. We might have some Five Nights at Freddy stuff, which we'll definitely be talking about later today. Apparently, Melo just told me she's on the way, so or they're, they're on the way, so hopefully they will actually uh, make it today. But, uh, yeah, get yourself a shirt, get yourself a tapestry, get yourself a tea top. Uh, basically, the only thing we don't have is hats right now. And all of that helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, hey, if you don't want that crash feeling, you want a natural energy, go on to w.gg and put in the code GAMINGFIXLIVE, all caps, and that's GAMING, F-I-X-X, -X, LIVE, all caps. And you get 10% off of your purchase. And uh, that goes to us. And we really appreciate it. Helps us out. Now I don't know what to talk about. And we're back. And uh, Mello is now in the studio. Hey, everyone. And... Uh, so what I'm going to do is say, hey, Mello, why don't you uh, get over here and tell us how you got the game on? For sure. I'm coming over right now. All right. And I'll just be off to the side this time because we haven't figured out how to do two cameras yet. Do 
you know. Hey everyone. So, um, I got my game on this week by participating in some, uh, I'm trying to say, I, I, uh, I participated in some, some things and, uh, nothing like Magic Online or, like, Arena or anything like that. It was just, like, um, basically me competing against, uh, other players um, I can't even remember what game it was. Oh my gosh. Uh, Must have been fun. <laughs> um, no, what I really did was I played some Monster Hunter now. Um, and it was okay. I just hadn't been able to play it in a little bit because I've been busy with work. And it's work be like that sometimes, you know? So, uh, I just, uh, have been working on trying to get on the arena because arena has been um basically fail mode yeah let's talk about that that's been really bad um the server has just not let us on and mm -hmm. even to the point that i phone yesterday and it wasn't working i don't know what's up i guess something happened with the last patch or whatever but it seems like we can't get online when we're trying to. Usually it's like late at night, at like after 11 or 12 at night. But um, yeah, we've been having a lot of trouble with that. I don't know if anybody else has been experiencing the same thing, but if you have, I recommend reaching out to Wizards and letting them know, or like, you know, I recommend trying to find a way to let Wizards know that the system is not working correctly. Um, there's something wrong with it, and then now at my house, I don't have any internet. Um, well, we have internet, it's just I can't connect to the internet for some reason. And um, I'm having a lot of trouble with that because I want to play my games, and I want to play all sorts of different things that, you know, I, I normally wouldn't play while I'm on my phone. But, um, yeah, the, between the the internet not being accessible to my tablet and arena just you know taking a big fat duty um i don't know what's the, what i'm gonna do um I, you know i'm probably gonna get more back into monster hunter now and then i'm also going to probably play if i can get it downloaded back onto my phone some pokemon go because i do miss playing pokemon go and uh, monster hunter now basically reminds me of Pokemon Go um, because of the, the, the way they chose to do the game. It's basically by Niantic and Capcom, um, so I guess it's not to be unexpected that the game would be like that because Niantic is, a game, is the company that makes games that, you know, are mobile on the go. You play while you're walking. Uh, so, you know, I've been playing in between... Uh, my lunch and breaks when I have them at when I'm at work um, on my days off um, I try to like get out and do a little bit of walking and see if I can find new monsters in the area that I'm at but um, I kind of been taking a break on it um, not just not because I'm tired of it it's just I've been busy and you know I'm probably tired myself physically and just feel like it's a little too much to do right now but um other than that uh i have been watching anime i've been watching spy family and that's been good i'm not gonna tell you a whole bunch of stuff about it right now because that i feel like that's kind of like a spoiler so um yeah I, so what is that is that more like a slice of life or is that more an action adventure um it's kind of action adventure based but um the premise of this of the move of the anime is that this guy who is a secret spy uh, for one of the uh, countries that's in a, in a war or trying they're trying to stop the, the other country from going to war 
Um, and uh, he's basically tasked with trying to create a family of his own and infiltrate uh, this guy, this particular guy, this target's um, plans and stuff like that for the war and influence him for the, you know, what kind of moves he may be making during the war. So, um, the last episode that we left off of, um, before the new season, it was Lloyd Forger, that's the guy's name, meeting up with the, the target, and, um, he was basically praising his son, who's the person that they're trying to get close to, with the daughter of the family, um, because they have, that way they can access the tar the actual target's, um, you know, person, person. Um, so there's Lloyd Forger, which is the dad, Anya, which is the little girl, and she's got capabilities of tele telepathy. Um, and then the mom, which is Yor. Yor is um, a, a, an assassin for um, the state, and she's basically trying to keep her life secret from everybody else. And so Everyone's basically trying to keep their lives and their abilities and their skills secret from each other. None of them know that they're actually, like, you know, really super-powered people, they, <laughs> which is funny, because they try to, to stay together as a family and, you know, be a, a functioning family. And, and Lloyd Forger does all these things to make sure that the family stays together and that, you know, everything looks copacetic and, and everything it goes uh, goes according to plan so it's been it's been a good series to watch and um i'm at the part i'm at the point right now where i'm in the second season uh, but the second season feels like it's coming out too 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 slow and i want to watch the old episodes again because it's that good but um other than that um frank and i went to see Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes, we did. Yeah, and we went in costume, too. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the pictures of uh, Five Night of my costume or anything like that, but you can find them on my Facebook page. Um, I was a spider mite, a nectar spider mite, because uh, um, my company is called Nectar, and, the, you know, I basically sell cannabis, um, and... Spider mites are something that you don't want in your crop of, you know, of cannabis at all. They can create um, webs and all kinds of problems in the flower. So I thought it would be funny and kind of like spooky to be a spider mite. Originally, I wanted to be a Black Widow, but everything that I was getting and making with the costume didn't seem to seem right. So... I changed it up, and it made more sense to me to be a spider mite than to be just a black widow. Black widows are scary, too. Maybe I'll, you know, do that for next year or a couple years from now. But, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun, and uh, Five Nights at Freddy's was, very, was, was, like, really scary, but not too scary to the point where it's like you got to walk away. <laughs> I've had to do that with a couple movies where they're too scary. It's like, oh, my God, I've I got to get out of here walk away. <laughs> But it was good, even though I had some plot holes, and we'll probably discuss that more um, without giving too many spoilers. Right, um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty fun. And uh, I was I was a pirate with a skin condition. Uh, in other words, my skin was missing, and I had my skull coming out of my head, which was kind of interesting. And uh, it was it was a fun time. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, I definitely liked watching Fre uh, Freddy's, and uh, we'll talk about it probably in a minute, right after. Oh yeah. About this. Oh yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it was definitely a, a good time. And I liked your costume. I thought it was pretty cool. Thank you. Um, it, I I wanted to have more spiders on the poncho that I got for my costume. It was basically a, a spider web poncho. And I tried to glue, hot glue on uh, uh, plastic glow-in-the-dark spiders. 
onto the poncho in places, but it, it, they weren't staying. So I went to Daiso um, the day of Halloween to get some uh, Velcro so I could like make them stick on there. And that, of course, didn't work either. So I, I finally just said, you know what, it's fine. I'll just go without all of the spiders on Where did you get the white glowing dark spiders that you have in your costume? Oh, yeah. I had the white glowing dark spiders that were remaining. Uh, from I got them from Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween's actually got a lot of great stuff. <clears throat> and uh, I was actually surprised, well, pleasantly surprised that I was able to fit into their plus size stuff. So, and as a matter of fact, I'm still wearing the pants from Halloween. I'm like, I, I like them. They're cool, and you know, they feel good, and they're soft, and it's just like I'm probably gonna wear them on a regular basis from from now on. Not like every day, but you know, when I I, I have things that need to be put into the laundry, yeah, that's when I'll probably wear this. But um, yeah, I'm definitely. We had a great Halloween, I think. You and me, Frank. And uh, I, I think, where'd you get that Five Nights from Freddy's Foxy? Uh, so, yeah, I picked this up at the thrift store. Um, you get a lot of uh, toys, to, and we're going to be doing giveaways eventually. But this is, yeah, this is a Foxy. Here, you can hold it. There, there we go. Oh. I barely get it on. There we go. That's uh, Five Nights Freddy's Foxy. Uh, definitely missing some parts, but so is Foxy, so hard to say how that came. It probably had legs at one time. Probably had a hook. I don't know. <laughs> but that's, what, that's that's how much of that I got. Um and I got it, you know, one of those two ninety nine bags. Well, you know what? That's pretty cool. And it looks like the, the parts can be replaced. It's just you gotta find where it, where you would get that, but I enjoyed Five Nights at Freddy's, honestly, because um, there's not a whole lot. I, I've never played the game, so let's say that right now. I've never played the game Five Nights at Freddy's. I've just seen reaction videos to the game, and um, I'm too scared to play it myself because it's like, you know, all those jump scares coming at you and all those, you know, yeah. <laughs> moves where they, they move quickly and at you. That's that that that'll get me every time. Maybe I, maybe I should do that though for one year. Ne like maybe next year play Five Nights at Freddy's for your streaming thing. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I mean like do a like a, a, an extra life event or something like that, spooky event next yeah, year. Yeah, before extra life, like a little bit before extra life, like right on Halloween. Yeah, let's do something like that maybe. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm I'm just throwing these ideas out there. Nothing's gonna be concrete, guys. We're just you know, yeah, just we're just so throwing me. it out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun, and I'm glad I got to spend it with you too, Frank. Yeah, that's cool. That's mm -hmm. So, so uh, well, you're still. Were you finished, or you have more more? Oh no, I I'm good. I'm good. I I was just about to say, you know, how did you get your game on? Well, I already went through that. Oh, um, you did? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I Sorry, did. I was late. No, that's fine. <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, I... Uh, so let's talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, I, like I said, I've never played I've never played the game either. Mm -hmm. And it was an uh, enjoyable game. And, or it was an enjoyable movie. Like, I definitely thought it was good for, like, just going to see like a nice popcorn flick for Halloween, you know, it, it, it was good for that. It was great, great for that. And uh, as far as, I don't know that I would say it was a good movie, but I will say it was, I would, I would say it wasn't, you know, it's not like trash or anything like that. No. I think it's a, a decent movie to watch. Yeah. And to, and, and to enjoy. Uh, you probably don't want to put too much, you know, you don't expect so much from it, like with backgrounds and all the things, you know, it's not like your super dramatic movie, that's not what it's about, it's, it's a scare play. Right. So, uh, enjoy that, it was, um, some of the things in it, well, basically, um, the whole, the whole premise being that, uh, if you've never 
I don't know, if you live in a rock or something like that. Basically, it's a pizza parlor, kind of like Chuck, Chuck e. Cheese. E. Cheese, but uh, with where the animatronic uh, band has lost its damn mind and is uh, it's a closed down place and uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, it's weird to talk about something without giving it away. I, I don't want to give it away, but basically that's that's the premise, is that it's a security guard that's watching after this uh, pizza parlor. Mm -hmm. And he's got a sister who is in his care. And uh, that's basically the premise. And, uh, the animatronics are different features yeah and uh basically he's tasked with not having somebody come into the building but the animatronics in there are not exactly non-functional so um besides trying to keep people out he's trying to keep the animatronics out from him and doing things to him I think the strongest, just straight up and down performance was probably Matthew Lillard. Uh, who played Matthew? Who was Matthew Lillard's character? He was. Uh, he plays the big bad guy. Oh. And the employment officer. Okay. Which are the same apparently. Yes. But that was a twist I probably shouldn't mention. Well, you know. When they showed the part where he, the photo, where the little girl took the photo and everything, um, I, I remembered that later on that after the movie, I was like, oh, so that was what tipped them off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. We've seen that item in the movie before. How come she's holding it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It was a good scare flick. It was a good scare flick, yeah. yeah. Um, I would... Not too much blood and gore, so if you're looking for that... That's true, yeah. Um, you know, that this is probably not the film for you, I would say. If you're looking to get, you know, kind of shook up and scared a bit, you know, wanted to watch a good story or fit flick for the kids, I would recommend this for the kids and stuff. It's not yeah. like, you know, your kids could wa couldn't watch this and have nightmares. They might if they're that young. Um, so, you know, but it was a good scare flick in my opinion, even though it had some plot holes that we, and, that me and Frank kind of discussed last night. Um, like we wanted to know what happened to, you know, the main character and his sister's parents. Why was, what happened? <laughs> that was, that was weird. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, usually when your kids are abducted, you don't just disappear. Right. Right. You just don't. And they so, never describe it like they don't, like I'm guessing they, that something really bad happened, like they committed suicide or something like that, but they never go into it. Yeah. So it's really strange that way. Um, but yeah, I I thought it was good. Um, mm -hmm. I would also was going to say that if if you are looking for PG-rated PG stuff, that uh, your kids can watch and you can watch as a family. Mm -hmm. Goosebumps was really good. Oh yeah, Goosebumps is also From, really it's good. It's on yeah. Disney Channel and it's on Hulu. It's on both, I think. And uh, that was really good. Also, uh, Winchester House is something that I think is not too bad for the family. It's basically a, or Winchester, I should say. It's just about you know, building the house. It's about just like a couple ghosts in it. It's not super scary, but it is a good Halloween flick. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is uh, let's say we definitely want to put Blood and Honey in that category. And I would put uh, other one that I watched, which I can't. 
if you are getting the ones I watch. I watch Winchester and I watch Oh Us. Oh Us probably isn't good for the family either. But uh Goosebumps and Winchester and Five Night of Night of Freddy's. Five Night of Freddy's is playing here with the local theater, but it's also playing on Peacock. So if you want to just sit down and uh, you're, not, you're not quite done with Halloween, feel like you want to do some more Halloween stuff. Uh, after all, today is Sam Hain, and it is also Dia uh, Sofo Mortes, or Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you do have about one more day. You could uh, sit down with the family and watch some Five, Five Nights at Freddy's on Peacock. Not, they're certainly not paying us anything. I'm just saying some people. Yeah. Some people know. So that's uh, the NBC app now. And uh, it's like five ninety nine. So, like, anything that's actually, like, if Am I don't know if it's on Amazon or not, but if it was, was on Amazon, it might be, like, $20. Mm -hmm. So getting the subscription is much cheaper. Or, yeah. you know, go out to movies. That was one thing that was weird is that, man, that, that movie theater was abandoned almost. Yeah. But, uh, we were watching it with, so we had an idea uh, of, you know, going in costume. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because we went in costume. And uh, other theater goers went in costume. So that was cool. So we were all yeah. in costume, except for the couple that was behind us. <laughs> Which was fine. Yeah, that's not a big deal. It's not like we're judging them or anything. No. It was, uh, but uh, we saw a Mario and a Wario and some Slytherin folk. Some Slytherin folk and some Jedi's. And, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was a nice little geek fest there. That was cool. Right? I almost wanted to take pictures with them, but I was like, that'd be kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny because like us being like nerds and Well no, us know. being nerds and having a nerd show, it's like you think we're more comfortable doing that kind of thing. Right. You it should think. be a little bit, but no. Especially because, you know, that's really cosplay more than Halloween wear. This is So I'm like, hey, we will take picture, but I just you know, it's Sure, strange there's, people there's we've never weird, met. There's still a weird shyness. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I mean, I can't justify why, been. but it's a thing. It, I, I don't know. Maybe it could have opened the door to, to other things that would have been good. Like, who knows? Maybe they would have had a campaign running somewhere. You seem like the kind of people who would either play magic or, like, either play some sort of video game or a tabletop game. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah, probably missed an opportunity there, but yeah. Probably, but you know what? Better, I, I guess. It happens. Yeah, it happens more than ever, more than often. Missed connections and all that. <laughs> I guess we could reach out to the people in the booth that were all dressed up as baseball people with the <laughs> yeah. weird faces. I'm, I'm not sure. I uh, think they were from the Warriors. I'm maybe. not sure. I'm not sure either. Because I've never sat down and watched The Warriors, and I know a lot of people have. Uh huh. It's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with The Warriors, but I am. It's about it's about how this guy's trying to get home while he's on the other side of town. Oh, That's so you've the, actually seen it? I've seen parts of it. I have not seen it from the beginning to end. So it's one of those things the nerd culture where everybody quotes it, but I've never actually sat down and watched it. Warriors! That's exactly what it reads. Come the, out to play. Exactly. <laughs> yep, that line. <laughs> that line. So, yeah, that's a thing that uh, people do. And I've been kind of thinking about, I guess I should watch it, but I don't, I don't have it. Is it like a cult classic, you would say? It's a cult classic, yeah, but I, I don't have the... Uh, I don't have the DVD right now. Well, you could probably stream it off of something. I mean, technology. Probably it's old enough. 
Yeah. I'm sure it's somewhere. I'm sure, like, YouTube has it somewhere in its files or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That, that would probably be a nice Halloween flick to watch, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I might check it out. Um, I think I'm going to finish Goosebumps tomorrow. I'm going to watch it on, uh, watch it during treatment. That just, sounds good. Just finish up good Goosebumps. But, uh, it was, it was interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't think we have anything more to say, folks. I think we're going to gonna head off in the van. But uh, thanks for tuning in. We have a little pause while uh, we're waiting for Mella. Thank you for waiting on me, folks. I really do appreciate your patience. And uh, bye, everybody. Bye. Lightning fast and they kick Chuck Norris in his cowboy ass It was the bloodiest battle that the world ever saw With civilians looking on a total law The fire raged on for a century, many lives were claimed But eventually the champions stood, the rest saw the better Mr. Rogers in a bloodstained sweater This is the ultimate showdown Ultimate destiny, good guys, bad guys, and explosions